What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to give you my thoughts on the brand new Garmin Tactic 7 Pro here and I've been using this watch as my daily driver ever since it was released so I'd say that's about three to four months. I'm going to give you my thoughts on the solar ring, actual actual usage on this solar ring, I'll give you my thoughts on using this watch as a daily watch and let's just face it guys not all of us are super athletes. A lot of us just like a really stylish smart watch, a really stylish fitness watch, a really stylish super watch I'm going to call it. So this review is going to be for you if you're that weekday bandit, if you're that weekend warrior and you want all the metrics that you can get while you're at the gym but you also want a stylish watch when you're not there, this is going to be a review for you. So let's get into it and talk more about the Tactic 7 Pro as an everyday watch. So right off the bat I do want to mention a couple things. This is a large watch, no doubt about it. This is a very large watch so if you like large watches definitely look at the Tactics or the Phoenix line. If you need something a little bit slimmer I highly recommend the Venue 2 Plus here. It's a really nice watch. You get a lot of the same metrics and also you get a beautiful beautiful AMOLED screen. The screen on the Tactics 7 Pro here is a really really nice screen as well. It's using a different different type of technology. And you do have their sapphire solar glass that they call it and this is going to give you some nice colors some nice contrast but again it's not going to compare anything to an amoled screen that's just 100 percent for sure but if you're out and about if you're doing your thing and you want to make sure you'll be able to read whatever's on your screen this is definitely the way to go it's a, it's a touch screen this time around and i never thought i'd really get used to a touch screen and it did take me about a month to realize that hey i can interact with this watch using my finger i can interact with this watch just by scrolling up or scrolling down. And once I got used to it, this is something that I don't think I can go back to. So for a lot of you that might be on the fence of upgrading and you think the only reason to upgrade is this touchscreen, I suggest that you guys do it. It just makes scrolling through your, your menus a lot easier. Just think about your cell phone. If you didn't have a touchscreen and you only had a couple buttons, how, how much more difficult that would be to go in and, and change certain things here and there. So I definitely like the touchscreen. I think they did a nice job. Now the touchscreen can also be, be enabled or disabled whenever you start an activity. So if you, if you don't want any accidental touches like I don't, whenever I start a, a strength training activity or a bike ride or anything like that, I generally just go ahead and disable the touchscreen. But you do have settings so you can enable it where you want to enable it. And there is a nice little flashlight right on the top here. So let me go ahead and activate that for you guys. Now I have used this while running, I have used this while biking, and it's just a nice little safety alert, nice little safety LED that you can activate when you're outdoors. So the flashlight definitely came in handy while running, but the number one thing that I've been using this flashlight for is just opening my door late at night. This is something that I've been using very, very often, guys, to open the door, or even when I'm just roaming around late at night. Maybe you're making that bathroom trip, no shame about that. Don't turn on all the lights, just go ahead and turn on this LED and you're good to go. Literally, you are good to go. But really, I like the touchscreen. I like the LED. I think they did a really nice job designing the Tactic 7 Pro line. I think it, it's one, one really stylish watch. Three, for those of you that might not know, you have three buttons on the side. So if you don't want to use that touchscreen, they are used to navigate through the watch. So you can use them to go ahead and go up or down the menus just like that. And of course, you can click on one and select it. It's a hot day in the city, 100% for sure. 91 degrees at the moment. But you get a lot of nice little little widgets here that you can go in and you can customize and you can see all about your latest activities. So I definitely like this on the watch. Now, again, this is not a detailed review. I've done a lot of those detailed reviews in the past and on this watch specifically. So I'll leave that down in the comments down below. What I really like about Garmin watches is they give you a lot of metrics, probably more metrics than you know what to do with. And that's a good thing for those of you that might be super athletes or training to be a super athlete. Or for those of you that are like me and you just want as many nerd stats as you can, the Garmin watch is 100% that type of watch that's going to give you more stats than you know what to do with. Speaking of which, I just want to go into the application here and I just want to show you the latest activity that I did and kind of give you an idea of what you can expect when you open up the Garmin app, which I think is one of the best in the business. They really have a well laid out application that shows you all of your most relevant information and it gives you probably probably everything that you'd want to know about your health, about your heart rate, about your body battery, about your steps, about your last seven days workouts, etc, etc. And it's also very pleasing to the eye. They do a nice job with their colors and whatnot. Opening up my last bike ride, you can see the distance, you can see your calories, you can see your time. You also get to see a nice little map of exactly where you rode or where you ran or any type of activity that you've chosen on your Garmin watch. 
So again, you're gonna have these stats that sync up to the cloud and they're always gonna be there. If you change phones, thankfully, they will download back to your phone. Then you can go into more detailed information. Now I do have a speed and cadence sensor connected to my bike. So this is a little bit more information than you'd get just if you were wearing the watch, but you guys get the idea. You get your average speed, your moving speed, you get your total time, your average heart rate. Here's your beginning potential. Now what I like about this is, I think this is pretty, pretty accurate, pretty spot on. When I started my bike ride, I was feeling all energetic. I was ready to go. And of course, when I came back, I was absolutely drained. It was about 90 degrees that day. And I definitely had no more left in the tank. And you can see there, my ending potential was 1%. That is actually true. I took a nap 100%, not lying to you about that. But you can see your primary benefit of your last activity, anaerobic, aerobic, your exercise load. Now here's the cadence. Now that cadence sensor will come in handy and it'll, it'll sync up with the application as well total ascent, et cetera, et cetera, and your calories. So again, you get a lot of information about whatever activity you did. Now, my last strength training, you can do strength training with the Garmin watch, but quite honestly, other than rep counting and other than keeping a timer, I really wouldn't recommend it for keeping detailed statistics about your strength training. A lot of times, this is just not accurate. Like, like right now, for example, I did a complete back workout. I had did nothing about the front. So you can see that the primary and secondary muscles here this is absolutely not true. I did not do any bench presses. I did not do any pull-ups. And a lot of the exercises, I didn't know what I did. I definitely didn't do any sit-ups, unfortunately. Didn't do any curls. So I just wanted to show you that. I mainly use my Garmin watch as a timer, as a, as a rep counter, because the rep counter actually does pretty good. It does better on push days versus on pull days. But it does a nice job of keeping your stats. And of course, the heart rate is on point, And you get your training effect. And you also get to see what type of time you spent in each specific heart rate zone. When you are outside doing an activity, you're going to lock on a GPS super, super quickly. Whether you're doing that hike, whether you're doing that run, whether you're doing that bike ride, thanks to multiband GPS, it's going to maintain a very, very strong signal. And it's going to lock on really quickly as well. I think all of the metrics that you get from the Garmin line, again, even include some of their other versions as well is some of the best in the business, the most accurate if you ask me. Prince, you're gonna get a nice detailed map, a nice detailed and accurate map of where you hiked or where you biked or where you ran. So I think you, I think Garmin once again does a really nice job with their metrics. So here's the little hike I went on, about 8.9 miles, three hours, and those are the calories that I burnt. And again, you can see your pace, you can see your average speed, you can see your heart rate, you can see the primary benefit to, to whatever type of activity you did. Total ascent, you can also see the calories burned, the average temperature. So you get a lot of information once again, and that's the name of the game when it comes to a super watch. You want more information than you know what to do with, and Garmin's one of those watches that's gonna do it for you. In terms of the heart rate accuracy, I find this to be really accurate when it comes to, when it comes to an optical wrist-based heart rate monitor. You can connect N Plus devices and Bluetooth devices, so you can go ahead and get a heart rate strap if that's what you're most concerned about. But for me, I think the wrist base does a decent job. There's a really nice job of just giving me an idea of how my heart rate is going. So it does well during strength training. Of course, it does well during biking or hiking or walking or running. In terms of optical heart rate sensors, it does a really nice job. Another great thing about the Garmin watch here is you can go ahead and broadcast your heart rate thanks to having that Ant Plus built inside. So I, I can connect my cadence and speed sensors over to, my, over to my watch. I can connect a whole bunch of peripherals over to my watch. But I can also send my heart rate over to my Garmin computer for my bike. And this way, while I'm training, I can go ahead and see my actual heart rate. Now, once again, I don't like, I don't like body, body based heart rates. I'm going to call them those straps. I would prefer just an optical. It might not be as accurate, but I'm getting a snapshot of what my heart rate is doing. And that's what it's all about. But I like this. I even have some treadmills at the gym where I can go ahead and broadcast my heart rate over to it. So again, you have intercooperability thanks to Ant Plus, and that's why I definitely like these watches as well. Garmin Line will also allow you to do some sleep tracking. So I slept for eight hours and 56 minutes. This was a long one back in May of 24. Deep sleep was an hour 28. You can see your light sleep, your REM, and the amount of time that you were awake. Here's your respiration as well. So you can see your average breaths and your lowest versus your highest. Respiration timeline. If you do have your, your, your blood oxygen set up, you can go ahead and, and get information about that. I actually didn't set that up, but you get a lot of information. I think it's useful for a lot of people. So I just wanted to show you that. In terms of the widgets, you can, you can add a whole bunch of widgets here and you can customize this list. Now, one of the widgets that I actually really like is body battery. And I found the longer I wear my Tactic 7 line, the body battery does a better job of kind of figuring out if I'm well rested or if I'm feeling fatigued. 
I don't actually know how it does it, but it definitely does a really nice job when it comes to when it comes to guessing, guesstimating your your overall your overall energetic levels. So again, you can see I'm about a 36 right now. It is a bit later on in the day, and it's also super super hot. So you can go ahead and see your body battery for the day, and on the app you can go ahead and see it for for other days as well. If you had any sleep data, you'll be able to see it there. Here's your blood oxygen reading as well. So let's just take a quick reading for you guys to show you what that'll look like. Here's my reading, so you can go ahead and you can see your history, and you can have this set up. It can do 24-hour monitoring. That's what I like about Garmin, is you get all of these all of these metrics, and most of them can be set to 24-7 monitoring. So if you're interested in a specific piece of information, like your heart rate, of course that's 24 hours, but your blood oxygen, you can go ahead and have that set up to read throughout the day. So I definitely like all of the features, all of all of the all of the metrics that you get from Garmin watches, including steps. Who doesn't like a step counter? And the number one thing that I like about step counting on Garmin watches is it actually pushes you a little bit more than other watches. This changes the, the average step count automatically. So if you don't walk too much for a specific amount of time, say a couple days, you only hit about 5,000 steps. It's going to lower your goal just a little bit to kind of get you motivated to reach that goal. And once you reach that goal for a few days, it's going to beef it up. So the more you walk, the more this is going to push you and get you to get you to go out and do more, get you to beat yesterday, as they say. And that's what I like about Garmin watches. They're constantly getting you to beat yesterday, constantly getting you to do better, to, to increase your health. And with these challenges and all the user base that Garmin has, again, the challenges are only as good as the user base. You can actually challenge yourself and you can opt into a, a, a challenge if you want to, and you can opt into different challenges throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout any activity to kind of go ahead and push yourself to beat yesterday. So again, I like the social aspect of the Garmin watches as well. So again, guys, for the everyday person, for that, for that person that likes to have a stylish watch but still wants a lot of detailed statistics, I really recommend Garmin. And if you, if you get a different watch like the Venue 2 here, you're also going to get these statistics. You're also going to get these detailed statistics. So it's not, it's not only found on their most expensive watches. Now, speaking of price, I believe this is about $1,000. So it is up there in price, but I think it's well worth it. This has definitely been one of my favorite lines. And the Venue 2, I think, is about... $350, $400. So again, huge, huge price difference. And I might as well show you what this looks like on the wrist here, guys. Again, it sits very nicely. It's a thin form-fitting type of wrist. It's not like a huge puck on, on your wrist there. And of course, you can see that deep black. So you can see the deep color. Really, really nice. Touchscreen as well. I'll leave a link to this video review down in my description below. But this is definitely a favorite watch of mine. One of the main reasons that I stick with the Tactics line or the Phoenix line, number one, I do like a large watch and I think it looks really, really nice on my wrist, but I also like watch bands. And over the years, I've definitely amassed quite a collection of Quick Fit 26 bands here. And to change it would just be super, super costly. I'll leave a review to all of these bands in my description down below, as well as a third party link. You can buy two and get one free if you don't mind the third party band. But I like watch bands, so I always stick with the Quick Fit 26 millimeter type of watch. Another reason that I stick with the Tactic 7 Pro or the Phoenix line is just because of the overall screen technology. You always get this always on display. And the number one thing you want from a watch is to always be able to tell the time at a glance. And with this screen technology, you're always able to do that and it doesn't eat up a ton of battery life. That's why I like the Tactic 7 Pro. So in terms of battery life, I usually get about two to three weeks of battery, sometimes even four weeks of battery life on the Tactic 7 Pro here. Now I was on vacation and I did take my charger, but I only had to use it towards the end of my vacation. So let's get into the solar ring and what I actually think about it. Now I do believe Garmin states about 37 days using solar and you do have to maintain a certain level of solar intensity throughout the day in order to, in order to get that increase in battery life. Now I made it 24 days without charging this watch while I was in Morocco and the sun was definitely glaring and I made sure to always Always have my watch outside the window when I was in the car or in direct sunlight. So I got 24 days. I made sure to count it. And at the end of that 24 days, I still had about 10% left. So maybe I could have pushed it to another day or two. So my thoughts on solar is I don't really see that much of an increased amount of battery life, even without getting as much sun. Here in New York City, I definitely don't get a lot of sun. I still am able, if I don't do any sort of activities, I still am able to get about 21, 22 days. So maybe that solar ring added about two days of battery life. I don't really know. One other thing I want to mention about battery life, I see some, some comments people claim that their Phoenix line or Tactics line just isn't getting that promised three weeks or two weeks or whatever it is of battery life. These watch faces play a major role, guys. 
If you're not using official Garmin watch faces from the Connect IQ store, some of them drain battery life like nobody's business. So just keep that in mind if you are, if you are kind of complaining or struggling about battery life on the Tactics or the Phoenix 7 line, one of your watch faces could be the main culprit, but I like watch faces anyway. So if it eats up an extra day or two, I'm gonna charge it anyway. It's not really a big deal to me, but I just wanna let you guys know that. So if you are really concerned about battery life, just go ahead and stick with one of the ones that Garmin gives you. They give you some really nice watch faces. And again, I've done a lot of watch face videos, so I'll leave that down in my comments below there. But battery life for me, two to three weeks is a constant. I'm definitely really happy with that, even with my training. And of course, speaking of training, the more GPS you use, the more it's gonna drain this battery. If you stream music from your wrist to Bluetooth headphones, it's gonna drain this battery. And that's just the name of the game when it comes to technology. Think about your phone. If you leave it on standby, you probably can get a couple of days. The minute you start using it, that drains like nobody's business as well. Now, speaking of phones and taking phone calls and whatnot, you do get text messages on Tactic 7. You do get incoming call alerts, but there's no speaker, no microphone, so you can't, you can't talk to your wrist like Dick Tracy. If you don't know who Dick Tracy is, you're definitely a lot younger than I am. You can receive texts on the Tactic 7 and you can also reply to them. Now you don't have a keyboard, which I think would be really nice if, if you want it just to reply with, with a little keyboard here on your wrist. You, you can't do that at the moment, but you do have some, some replies that you can use and, and these are predefined. You can make your own predefined replies. So again, you can kind of look through these and you can create your own. I like this one. Sorry, you can't talk right now. So it will send from your wrist. So that, that's really it when it comes to the Tactic 7 Pro. I think this is an awesome watch. I'm super, super happy with it. This is my daily driver. This is a watch that I absolutely enjoy wearing. It's also a watch that maybe it was called a satellite on my wrist once or twice, but I actually really like large watches. So that didn't phase me at all. But if you're looking for an awesome watch, it's gonna be able to keep up with you no matter what you're doing. Whether that's you trying to be that super athlete, whether that's you just going to the gym on the weekend, being that weekend warrior, whether that's you just wanting a stylish super watch on your wrist that's gonna give you any metric that you want anytime you look at it, the Garmin Tactic 7 Pro is that watch for you. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and as always, I'll catch you in another video.